it on the dotted line. Let's fill the doubt for your freedom ring and patriotic voices sing. Red, white, and blue, never give up. You represent America! Hoping and praying for a brighter day. I listen to my heart and I obey. How can I see it any other way? I'm looking at my life with my own eyes. Today on Liberty's Kids. We need that money. Otherwise, I fear that the sword I now wear to defend France as our ally, I may be forced to draw against France as a British subject. The Americans know nothing of my plan to betray their fight for liberty by going behind their backs to end the war with England. General Washington sent me because he believed a soldier could explain to them that we are at the end of our tether. I've got no time to waste. I must have the French fleet dispatched. Dearest Mother, it feels wonderful to stop and rest upon my return to New Windsor to cover events at General Washington's headquarters. I just left James and Henri in Newport, Rhode Island. Hi, up. Henri is so excited that French forces have arrived. He brags that they will end the war, and soon. I do hope he's right. Sometimes it seems as if the violence has been going on forever. James thinks he can use Henri's help speaking French when he meets General Rochambeau, the commander of the French army. He told Henri he could go with him, as long as Henri promises to behave himself. And who have we here? Henri, what are you doing? Paying tribute to the pastry of my homeland. Hmm. Pas de problème. It's all right. Return to your duties. Hmm. Merci! So, you are French? Oui! Is this young man a fellow journalist, James? My apprentice. And he humbly apologizes for his actions, sir. An apprentice who speaks French? Perhaps he might be interested in reporting firsthand how the British fleet has our navy blockaded in the harbor? Would I? I mean, oui, mon général. I've been waiting for a chance to prove I'm as good as James. I guess he deserves a chance, General. I will make arrangements immediately. Driver, is someone shooting at us? Sure looks that way, ma'am. It's a band of armed Tories. I'm Robert Shirtliff, Light Infantry, Massachusetts, 4th Regiment. You best come with me to safety. Well, I'm not so sure. All right. Armed Tories here? Yes, ma'am. There are folks in New York still loyal to England. Oh. They help the British by attacking us where we don't expect it, behind our own lines. It's our job to stop them. Is that how you got that scar on your forehead? Yep, from a loyalist saber. You were cut by a sword? You don't even look old enough to shave. Shh, they're getting close. General Rochambeau, sir, how do you like America? It is not what I expected. Why, you don't even have a centralized government. Your Congress can only suggest what the state should do. Your treasury is empty, your military supplies are nearly exhausted, and the local citizenry is angry. I know. Even General Washington is upset that his soldiers must take food from citizens to feed themselves. But I'm sure he'll think of something. He already has. 
the general sent Colonel Laurent to France to beg for more gold, guns, and gunpowder. Why would he send Colonel Lawrence when Ben Franklin is already there? Cote de Virgin, may I present Congress's special envoy, Colonel John Lawrence of South Carolina. Bonjour, Colonel. And good day to you, sir. Dr. Franklin has told me of how unfailingly the French Foreign Minister of Finance has supported our cause. I wish I could do more. You can do more. Colonel Laurent, while you were journeying here to France, we graciously agreed to give America a gift of six million livres. You should congratulate Dr. Franklin. Sir, you mock me. We need 25 million livres, otherwise I fear that the sword I now wear to defend France as our ally, I may be forced to draw against France as a British subject. If I am to be insulted in this manner, I'm afraid I must take my leave. Monsieur Virgin. A message has just arrived from Chevalier de la Luzerne. And what does our ambassador to the American Congress in Philadelphia have to say? He wants to know how you are progressing with your plan for a peace conference. Shh! The Americans know nothing of my plan to betray their fight for liberty by going behind their backs to end the war with England. Colonel Lawrence, a spoonful of honey will catch more flies than a gallon of vinegar. Are you suggesting I apologize? In a word, yes. I cannot. We need that money. Don't you understand? General Washington sent me because he believed a soldier could explain to them that we are at the end of our tether, and now or never our deliverance must come. Colonel, I am 75 years old and suffering from a severe attack of gout. I'm afraid that I do not have the energy to pursue an action I cannot win. I will write Congress that I have secured the six million livres and add to that my resignation. How many Tories do you think are out there? I can't tell yet. The Tories are right behind us, Robert. I guess we stopped him, Robert. Robert! <gasps> oh. Oh. Rochambeau said that to you? We're disorganized and ill-prepared to fight? In so many words, yes. I don't understand him. He wants to send his troops south to aid Lafayette when he could join with me to retake New York City and end the war. Robert, you've got to let the doctor examine you. The shot is still in your shoulder. I don't want any doctors operating on me. I've seen too many men die after surgery. I'll handle it myself. I don't know what your story is. Treating your own wound? I don't know if you're brave or foolish. So, do the ships always walk like this? Back and forth and back and forth? <laughs> Commission. Come, we must ride to Rhode Island and urge Rochambeau to send the French fleet to strike now. Retaking New York City would make big headlines. That would take too long. Right now, I need a quick victory. If 
My spies are hearing rumors that Vergen, the French foreign minister, wants a peace conference with the British to end the war. I've got no time to waste. I must have the French fleet dispatched. This is the perfect time for Rochambeau to sail for the south, capture Benedict Arnold, and defeat his army. Now that headline would stop the peace conference. Yeah. I am aware of the rumors that De Vergin wishes to make peace with the British. Then why do you waste two days honoring me with these balls? It takes time to properly feed sheep for a successful mission. Robert, are you all right? Robert? Hello, is there a doctor out there? Yes, I'm Dr. Barnabas Binney. I was talking to Robert, and all of a sudden he stopped talking and started sweating. Mm, symptoms sound like malignant fever. It's all over the camp. Is he going to be all right? I'll check his heart. What? Oh, no. What is it? Is he dying? No, Robert's going to live, but... How shall I say this? Robert isn't a he. He's a she. What? Dr. Binney thought it would be better if you recovered from your wounds here in his house, away from prying eyes. So while the doctor figures out what to do about a young soldier who everyone thinks is a man, but really is a woman... Why don't you tell me your whole story? Where should I start? How about with your real name? My name is Deborah Sampson. Deborah, why would a woman enlist in the Continental Army? Heck, I was tall as most men, just as strong too, and I wasn't afraid to shoot a gun, so why shouldn't I fight for my country? I guess I was always kind of unconventional. See, my father went off to sea when I was a very young girl, and. My mom was too poor to care for seven kids, so I worked from the age of 10 to 18 as an indentured servant. Indentured? You mean forced to stay in work, not able to leave until your mother's debt was paid off? Yes, that's exactly what I mean. And I'll tell you one thing, working in the fields made me strong. After my chores were done, I taught myself to read, Sarah. I read every book I could get my hands on. I must have learned a lot, because when I turned 18 and earned my freedom, they hired me to be a school teacher. But I didn't think women were supposed to be school teachers. <laughs> I caused quite a stir, and I'll tell you something. I really did love teaching. I guess not following the rules just comes naturally to me. And since the army doesn't accept women, you enlisted as a man. Well, I sure tried. Timothy Thayer. Yes, ma'am. The problem was, I tried to join up in my own hometown. Not the smartest thing. Timothy Thayer, huh? Well, I only know of one person in this town that holds a quill that way. Because of an injured finger on her left hand. And that's the school teacher, Deborah Samson. They caught you and you tried again? Why? Well... I just turned 21, and I didn't want to just get married. And I wanted to fight for my country. To all brave, healthy, able-bodied young men. <laughs> I knew the army was harder for soldiers, so I went to a town further away and enlisted there. How on earth did you go unnoticed by the other soldiers? It was hard. They teased me about not shaving, so... <laughs> I told him I was just too young to grow a beard. Your story is amazing! You took so many risks. Yes, but I was always afraid of being caught. I'd heard of some other women who disguised themselves as men to enlist. When they were discovered, they were disgraced. But you still had the courage to follow what was in your heart no matter what the obstacles. 
Deborah? Mm. You should rest now. What amazes me is that her disguise has gone undiscovered for over a year. What are you going to do? I'm afraid that I must follow orders and inform the army as to the true identity of Robert Shirtliff. What is it, James? Excuse me, General. About the letter you wrote to your nephew? Ah, yes. I wrote to Lund that if Rochambeau had ordered the French fleet to sail south when I wanted, we could have captured that traitor Benedict Arnold and destroyed his army. I'm sorry to report that it's been printed in this New York Tory newspaper. Outrageous! That was a private letter to my nephew, and I was deeply upset when I wrote it. Now everyone, including Rochambeau, is going to read it. I will write Rochambeau an apology for my blunder. Dr. Franklin, your genius for inventions never ceases to amaze me. I thought a duet on my glass harmonica with Marie Antoinette might be nice. If you'll excuse me, Virgin, I believe the letter I've been waiting for has arrived. Is it from America? It's Congress's response to the letter I sent. Thank goodness they do not accept my resignation. They have the good sense to realize that when I resigned, I wasn't feeling well. I must write Congress and tell them that I'm feeling better, and it will be a great honor to once again buckle down to the business of America. Then I shall take my leave. Monsieur Virgin. The English have replied to your request for a peace conference. There will be no peace conference. The English refuse to attend. Why? Because King George considers it to be a matter solely between England and her colonies. That is the end of it. Sleep. You must be Henri. Follow me. I'll take you to your bunk. This is your bunk. There's someone in it. But of course, there aren't enough beds for the whole crew. So you sleep in it when he is on watch. I can handle that. I'll be too busy as a journalist to sleep anyway. So where do we eat? Dinner. Sacre bleu! Is this what you usually eat? No, this is better. Wait till we set sail. That's when we get the bad stuff. Let's go, Penny! So, you're sure you don't want to continue as a journalist with the French Navy? Oui. I guess you could say I don't have the stomach for it. <laughs> hey, Washington's talking to Rochambeau. Come on. Count Rochambeau, I am dearly sorry for any embarrassment I caused you with my letter. It was written in a time of distress and was meant to be private. Mon General, I received your letter of apology. Consider the matter of no consequence. Thank you, sir, but I must persist. Have you given any further thought to my suggested plan of attack? General, I have indeed considered your plan, and I'm now ready to join you in an attack on General Cornwallis in New York City. Boy, Sarah missed a really good story. No, I'm gonna be disgraced. But what you did shows how dedicated you are to the cause of liberty. But I'm still worried they'll put me in jail for dressing as a man. Deborah Sampson, also known as Robert Shirtliff. Because you impersonated a man and enlisted against military policy, 
Here it comes. <laughs> it is my honor to note your extraordinary instance of female heroism by discharging the duties of a faithful, gallant soldier. And therefore, I present you with an honorable discharge from the Continental Army of the United States, Light Infantry, Massachusetts 4th Regiment. that I was in a heap of trouble. Except you showed the whole nation what you are capable of. I reckon I did, didn't I? So, what will you do now that this adventure is over? I guess I'm just gonna have to find me another one. Another letter to your mother? Yes. I just had to tell her how impressed I was with Deborah Sampson. I'll tell you, she impressed me, leaving that shot in her shoulder. It's more than that. She made me wonder, if a woman can find a way to serve as a soldier, why can't she enjoy the same rights of citizenship that men have? Why can't this whole country be unconventional? I mean, aren't we already rebels? What are you doing? If I couldn't be a journalist, I wanted to show you I could be a printer all by myself. That's great. Now you could show us how you could clean up. All by yourself. <laughs> <laughs>